came, did incredibly well by raising the amnesty issue. It is popular with voters. It is not popular with, unfortunately, the, most of the people who control the media. Um, and and when, the, when the defunding of Obama's executive amnesty came up, the Republicans did try to fight it, and the Democrats did filibuster it for three weeks. But unless you were reading Breitbart, you didn't know about it. <laughs> um, there was just no media attention to it. Uh, and now I, they've betrayed us on trade. My objection to the trade deal is it's a backdoor amnesty. It allows not only the free movement of goods, but the free movement of people. So, so a company can say, well, I need so many low-wage workers coming in to take these jobs. Um, I, Republicans have a winning issue here. Uh, if they would just talk about it. And, and look, the Ann Coulter rule is there, there are a lot of bad Republicans, there are no good Democrats. Um, <laughs> there, are, there are a fair number of, ver of, of Republicans in both the House and the Senate who are fantastic on amnesty, and we need to push them and elevate them, and people need to be more like them. And what? I also think we should take out one, this is what we mm -hmm. as voters can do, um, they should stop being stupid. Um, <laughs> I think we only need to take out one of these guys. Maybe John Boehner. Just one of them. And again, as you know, if you assiduously follow my work, I harangued all of you to vote for the Republican don't go for the Tea Party candidate because really bad things happen when Democrats control the Congress. But um, I mean, that's why the Brat thing was fantastic. And, and a lot of these Tea Party candidates I'm not even sure I believe half of them, but they're not that good. They haven't run for anything before. We need to find a place where there is a good candidate to challenge a bad Republican. And, and that, um, as Voltaire said in Candide, we hang one to encourage the others. <laughs> <laughs> So now I'm going to ask the apocalyptic question, which I know everybody, every Republican at this point has felt, which is, okay, what happens if we can't actually do anything? Because it feels like on every front, the President of the United States is doing whatever the hell he wants. There yeah. is no rule of law anymore. The Supreme Court obviously does not care about the rule of law. They're doing whatever they please. Congress is willing to abdicate whatever authority it has. Mm -hmm. They're just handing over the cash. So what do citizens do, and how fast is this going to turn very ugly? That's a good question. Um... I don't think it will turn any uglier than it is. I just feel like most Americans are hunkered down hoping it will all go away. But it's not going to go away. And the winning path to follow is Pete Wilson in 1994. Uh, and, and look, it's, it's Americans who have shut down three amnesties in the last decade. It wasn't because, you know, some major network or newspaper was alerting you to it. The American people would somehow, by cr hook or crook, find out, oh my gosh, they're doing it again. They're trying to pass an amnesty. And they, uh, th three times now, shut down the congressional switchboard. Well, you, you may have to shut down your newspaper switchboards or your, your TV network sh switchboards and make it clear this is what we want to hear about because this is all that matters in so many ways. And even to the Democrats, I'd say, I mean, I'm assuming this is a Republican audience. That's why I talk about how it is just... It's the end of the Republican Party nationally. We might have a few seats in Montana, Idaho. Are they moving any of the unaccompanied ch children there? But, but, I mean, the whole country will be California uh, without the beautiful beaches, attractive people. <laughs> You'll all be the Kardashians. It'll be awful. Um, <laughs> But you, there, this is the, even if you are a Democrat, this is going to change our country in such a fundamental way. We will be like Brazil, and I think it'll just happen slowly, and you'll wake up one day, and, uh, you know, after election after election, that's fine. We, will ha we won't even be as good as Mexico, because Mexico has the advantage of living next to the most wealthy country in the world. No, we will be Brazil with a very, very wealthy 10, 20 percent, and a very, very poor uh, 80 or 90 percent. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's not only the freest country that's ever existed, but what, what always set America apart, and California, I would say particularly, was our enormous, prosperous middle class. Enormous. I always 
think that's why um, um, my theory of why the ugly American image developed in Europe, um, because most of the Europeans, most of the people you meet from, from foreign countries will you know, fly across an ocean to come to America. We only meet their elites. No, not, not Americans. Everybody used to travel to Europe. Not now. We're all worried about paying rent. Holding on to your job, paying for for all of those you know special English translators at the schools, paying to support your hospital from going bankrupt. I mean, this is just so crushing to the middle class. But it's good for Mark Zuckerberg. It's good for the rich. It's good for the rich farmers with all that cheap labor because they refuse to mechanize. So here we are in California, which is, as you mentioned, sort of the bottom of the hill. Um, what exactly are Californians supposed to do? I get this question a lot because we just, for the first time, passed. We, we are now a, a plurality Hispanic state, uh, and we are we are now minority white state, which means that I suppose that pretty soon I, my kids can can apply for affirmative action, which is exciting right. for the first time. I don't think it's um, going to work that way. Yeah, that's, that's unfortunate. <laughs> it, it worked for it worked for Jews for like this long, and then it was gone. But um, so what? We, we, Aside from using our lives to serve as warning for others, what right, exactly right, should right. Californians do at this point? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> wow. <Huh. laughs> this is not an encouraging pause. <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's you're just a warning for others. <laughs> I don't see anything else that can be done. Well, I mean, I suppose, I mean, obviously, alert the, alert the rest of us where it's still time in the rest of the states. But also, I wonder, I mean, my prescriptions for the country, um, triple layer fence, I want it to be as difficult to get into the United States as it used to be to get out of East Germany. I'm so sick of hearing fences don't work. <laughs> it's like shoelaces, they just don't work. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Of course they were. Yeah, oh, they cannot come untied. I know the human spirit. Uh, <laughs> Um, my long-term plan, which um, would be fantastic for Israel, is to move them to the northern por portion of Mexico. Um, I have a chapter, Why Can't We Have Israel's Policy on Immigration? That's a country that knows how to defend its borders. Um, that would be good for them, good for us, fantastic for us. Um, they'd have us, their biggest best buddy in the whole world, right next to them on one whole one whole side. Um, well, Obama's president, so not for long on that one. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, we have to get rid of the anchor baby policy. I also think we need to repeal. I want it. I want it retroactive. Incidentally, in the news all now is this El Chapo, the biggest drug cartel leader, he's in my book, um, he's married to an anchor baby uh, who a couple of years ago flew back to California to give birth to her own two anchor babies um, as soon as, at your expense. Um, as soon as she had given birth to her two anchor babies, she flew right back to join El Chapo, uh, who, is, who replaced, I think, Osama bin Laden on Interpol and the FBI's most wanted list. And, hmm, how did he escape from prison? Well, because in Mexico, the cartels own the prisons. Forget California, that's your future, America. Um, so, as I describe in my book, is the anger baby policy was a footnote in a Justice Brennan opinion in 1982. This does not go back to, you know, the Reconstruction Amendments. The 14th Amendment was about one thing, again, utterly insulting to black Americans. The 14th Amendment, hmm, why was that passed? So that someday La Raza could usher across Mexican women who were eight and a half months pregnant. They could drop a baby and say, ha, ah, you didn't catch me. I'm an American citizen now. No, it, uh, people don't put trap doors in a constitution. Uh, a secret trap door. Ooh, this will surprise them. Um, to get an amendment passed, you need a mass feeling about a, a big thing. We had just fought a civil war to force, again, the Democrats to stop enslaving blacks. Um, that The 14th Amendment is absolutely exclusively about black Americans. That's what it's about. And by the way, it's not about gay marriage either. But... <laughs> 
<laughs> They're at least gay Americans. <laughs> Here we're talking about people who've never set foot on U.S. soil before playing a game of Red Rover with our Border Patrol for the most precious possession in the universe, citizenship in this country. No, that is not how you get American citizenship. <laughs> but Justice Brennan... This only came in 1982. 1982, Justice Brennan slipped it in a footnote of a 1982 opinion. It is utterly outrageous, um, fraudulent. Uh, Justice, or j rather Judge Richard Posner, whom, as you can attest, very smart, most cited federal judge, not a friend of social conservatives. <laughs> so this, this isn't, you know, me speaking. Um, a few years ago, I quote him in the book, he concurred in an, in an immigration opinion for the sole purpose of adding a concurrence that, that said, Congress, would you end this anchor baby policy? It's not in the Constitution. Pass a law tomorrow and end it. It's not only got to be ended, but, and this would save California. I want it retroactive. Mm. <laughs> I mean, this, what, uh, what if we had a mentally delusional Supreme Court justice, <laughs> not that hard to imagine, who says, you know, all of America, or all of the world is a citizen of America. Are, are we all going to honor that? Because that's what's happened with the anger baby policy. Um, Just make sure Kennedy takes his drugs this morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, what if we had A? I guess that was. Um, so anchor baby policy, the wall. Um, oh, yeah, no, the, the moratorium. We need a complete mor immigration moratorium. So this isn't just about, this isn't just about Latin America. It isn't just about Mexico. I don't want European immigrants coming. I don't want anybody coming. No marriage, no, no refugees, no asylees. Just shut it down for 10 years and you'll see, I explained it toward the end of my book. My original idea was let's go back to pre-1970 rules and try to get. As I say, people are better than us that, rather than people who are worse than us. But that, won't work because we have all these nonprofits. We have hundreds of, you know, ACLU migrant rights groups and George Soros Open Society Institute and La Raza, founded by the Ford Foundation, incidentally, not by Hispanics um, like LULAC was. Um, we have hundreds of these groups. I do a paragraph that goes on for a full page of just some of them, and those are all the ones who become the immigration judges. Those are all the ones who work at the INS until they are all out of business and vacationing in, you know, Cuba and fighting with the, the Tupac um, Amaru in, in Peru. Until they are gone, America can't be safe. So we need to just shut down immigration altogether for a decade, dust off the books, assimilate the ones already here, and then we can start it up again totally cheap. I could do it all before breakfast. <laughs> just send me the photos. I'd be right 99% of the time. I'd be better than what we're getting now 100% of the time. <laughs> Ann Coulter, 11-time New York Times bestselling author. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. What do we do, Lee? Director, how are you guys doing? Okay.